Welcome to the new Flat Rate Podcast. A podcast for contractors who need help increasing their service tickets, creating working processes, and building freedom in their life. Today's episode is all about value. Where does it come from? What does that look like? And what does that mean? And now your host, Danielle Putnam. Hi, my name is Danielle Putnam. I'm the president of the new Flat Rate. And hey, I'm really excited to introduce you to Chris Michelle. Chris is actually a business coach and consultant, and he does some equipment sales training for the new flat rate and some coaching with us, as well as a lot of other coaching. And he's an author. But Chris, I'm probably doing that extremely injustice. Could you please help me introduce you to our wonderful audience today? Well, thank you, Danielle. No, you're doing an amazing job. And it's so weird. Um, at this stage in my life, I start to say things like I own my own business and I get to do this and I get to do mm-hmm. that. And I get to be an author. Yeah. Um, it's so cool. It really is cool. But um, yeah, I, I own my own coaching consulting business and I do get to partner now with TNFR, which is really cool. Um, and we've, we've started doing this program, which I'm super happy about and super excited. And then I just finished writing my own book, um, called the red chair experience. Hence I'm sitting in my red chair. This is it. Um, You're sitting in the red chair. I'm in the, the red book. chair. Absolutely. Wow. So, the red chair experience. Yeah. So it is, uh, it's a daily inspiration for success in life and business. And mm-hmm. it's really designed to help people kind of get a, a daily boost. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I think Zig Ziglar said it best when he said, you know, uh, we all, you know, struggle with motivation, daily motivation, mm-hmm. but that's why we take showers daily too, right? We we need yeah. that. <laughs> we yeah, need that as of part of it. Yeah. But um, it, it just really dawned on me that that was something that was on my heart and something mm-hmm. that I get to do every day myself. And so, mm-hmm. um, it's amazing just kind of watching that whole thing. And and we're finishing up, literally finishing up the process as we speak. And uh, I should have book in hand within the next two weeks. So wow, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So it's, it's super exciting. I mean, there's just a lot yeah. going on and I'm super excited to be here working with you, obviously. So, yeah, well, we are too. Hey there, quick reminder to stick around until the end of the podcast for story time featuring longtime TNFR member, David Hutton, talking about how he saved his business. And Chris has, has really has worked together with Matt Cope, our VP, developing this new equipment sales training system. And Chris, could you tell us just a little bit about your background and how you got into being a consultant coach and kind of expert in equipment sales or sales in general? Sure, absolutely. Um, So I've been in sales for uh, over 30 years. Can I say that quietly enough that nobody can hear? You mean when the day you were born, you were selling? What? (laughs) Exactly. I came out of the womb selling. I was just... Yeah, um, you're natural. Yeah, thank you. Um, but I've been doing sales for over 30 years and, and through my experiences, the last 18 of which have been in the heating and air business. Mm -hmm. And I have, um, been in sales, sales management, even general management, I've run Mm -hmm. heating and air conditioning companies. And so I have a a real Mm -hmm. understanding of, of the HVAC world, if you will, and even home services, because some Mm -hmm. of those companies worked with plumbing and we had plumbing and electrical divisions. And so I was able to do those things as well. So that's where a lot of this came from. And and I got the opportunity um, early in my HVAC career to learn how to build a price book. Mm -hmm. And I can say, honestly, I'm glad that people like TNFR exist because I don't have to do this anymore. Um, A lot of work. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to do that over the years and, and creating that as a business owner, that can be frustrating. Right. But um, finding and developing all of those things over time was really cool it was mm-hmm. a great experience, but mm-hmm. that's where I come from. And, and I've sold everything from mailing and shipping equipment to energizer batteries, to Lego toys, to, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I've, I've had a lot of experience and then food processing. I was there for a number of years before mm-hmm. I came into the heating and air business. Very interesting. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Today, you know, I wanted Chris to talk about his book and share that in the red chair you know, was a big inspiration of his book. Can we talk for just a second before we get into our real topic of today about spending? I know John Maxwell talks about the importance of having a thinking chair, Mm -hmm. right? So the red chair, without spilling too much, even about your book, 
or maybe do. We can. It's, it's uh, okay. You I mean, know, it, like, is yeah. it, for example, in the corner of your house, is that where you go and you, whether you're meditating or you're thinking or you're working on instead of in, uh, you know, is that, is that your, your zone? So, um, so let's do this. I'll, I'll tell you the background. Okay. So this red chair that I'm sitting in is a, it's a red leather recliner and um, it's probably 15 plus years old. Its original owner was my stepfather, who was my business mentor for a number mm -hmm. of years. Unfortunately, we lost him about six years ago. Um, oh, and thank you. And he um, was such an impact in my life that, um, you know, when, when he died, it was kind of like, now what do I do? Right. So mm -hmm. for a number of years, I kind of struggled with that whole, who's my mentor and who can I trust with business decisions and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Right. Well, then um, my brother, my younger brother, um, very involved athletically and uh, very popular where he lived in mm -hmm. South Bend, in the South Bend area. Um, he had a hip problem because he played sports in, for a number of years. And so uh, sure. he, he just had this injury and it was uncomfortable for him. So he needed a chair. Mm -hmm. He had a chair like this that was just in shambles. And so um, luckily mom saved the chair and she said, hey, do you want the chair? John says, my younger brother says, yes. And mm -hmm. so I went up, picked it up and drove it over to him Thanksgiving of 2018. Mm -hmm. 2019, we lost my brother to suicide. Mm -hmm. And oh that um, was too much for my sister-in-law and my niece and nephew to have in the house. They, it mm -hmm. just was too much of a reminder. Yeah. And my sister-in-law looked at me and she just said, would you be interested in taking this? And I said, absolutely. I've got the perfect mm -hmm. place for it. And we'll sit in my master bedroom and in the corner, like you said, mm -hmm. is, this is the corner of my master suite. Mm -hmm. And so it sits in the corner and it is, it's my place that I go and I meditate and I read and I pray and I do, you know, just my daily kind of sure. inspirational time, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, and, and I believe that everybody needs a red chair, hence the name, the red chair experience. It's, it's mm -hmm. why I kind of developed that name for the book was because for me, it's an experience. When I sit in this chair, it's not lighthearted. It's not necessarily joking around or things, but I, it can, it can mm -hmm. certainly be those things, but it's really more of a, it's my place. It's my yeah. place to go. And some people go out on the trail. Some people go to a mountain, some people to go mm -hmm. to the beach. Some people, mm -hmm. they have their place, right? And this is my place. And mm. so um, it has become that. And, and that's mm -hmm. really where it came from. And that's the whole idea behind it. So I, I jokingly say that occasionally I'll have conversations with the previous owners uh, of the chair. <laughs> um, but there's truth to that. And, yeah. but we all have our place, right? And we right. all have right. our, and if you don't, you, I would encourage you to find a place and not mm -hmm. necessarily you, Danielle, but you listener, if mm -hmm. you don't have a place, I would encourage you to get one because we all need that alone time. We all need that mm -hmm. time to we've got to take care of ourselves, And mm -hmm. if we don't take care of ourselves, then we can't take care of others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that story. You yeah. know, I hate to hear about your brother. I'm one of nine kids. And so with eight siblings, like it's yeah. siblings are very precious to me and I have children yeah. and watching their relationship to each other. And, you know, I, I know that that's a really special relationship. So sorry. Yeah. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Thank you. And we do all need our place, which leads us directly into what we're here to talk about today. You know, Chris and I were on the phone a couple weeks ago and I said, hey, we really need to podcast together and and talk and just share awesome things with, with people. But in particular, I asked Chris, what are you passionate about? What have you been studying, researching or what's been keeping you up at night? Like what's on your mind? And that's a valuable, important question to me. Because I know that in different walks of our business life and personal life, there's different things that we're into. So me personally, like I'm kind of back on the leadership kick, like how can I be a better leader? And then I'm really into the management kick right now. How can I be a better manager, manage my business better? And so for Chris, I said, you know, what is it that you're into that you're really passionate about and would be willing to share? And Chris said value. He is, is really doing a deep dive into value. And that's something that we don't really talk about openly. Honestly, uh, you know, it's like, hey, have value in your sales process with your product or something, but that may be as far as it goes. So I'd like to, to leave it there and say, welcome to the discussion on value. Chris, what has led you to that? And where are you in your value journey? Um, th there's a number of things that, that leads me to this, right? Because we talk about this from a 
um, especially in the heating and air plumbing electrical, when we're in these home services businesses, too often homeowners can look at this and go, oh, this is a commodity. I'm just going to get 20 different um, estimates, right? I, I'm just going to bring anybody in and see what the mm -hmm. best price I can get. And then we, we as salespeople, sales managers, uh, general managers, we go and we just say, hey, Danielle, you need to add value. You need to be valuable. You need to, and, and we just, to your point, we leave it at that. We don't talk further about what does that look like and how does that work and what does it mean? And mm -hmm. so um, I've been having these conversations and we've, we've really done, like you said, a deep dive into this. And we started talking about, well, number one, where does value come from and how is it perceived right? Because value is the monetary or exchange of a product or a service mm -hmm. for the, uh, for money or for something else, right? Maybe you do a bartering system and you barter your service for their service. So there's a value that's determined by that, right? And you have to determine, is it worth it, right? Mm -hmm. We have to, and, and this is what's really interesting, right? So we dive a little bit deeper into this. And we go, we do this with our relationships. Mm -hmm. So we have we friendships, do. we have, um, we have, um, um, gosh, romantic relationships, right? Mm -hmm. We have family relationships and we determine the value of each one of those, right? Mm -hmm. Are they giving me what I need? Am I giving them what they need? And mm -hmm. if we are, then it's great. If we're mm -hmm. not, then we, we sit back and we evaluate and we go, is it worth it to spend mm -hmm. the time doing this, right? So similarly with our business, mm -hmm. are we providing value? Now, how do we do that? And it's not just, and it's funny because I get the answers of, well, they don't have me, right? The other companies, they don't have me. <laughs> that's great. That's a, that's a wonderful feature, but tell me yeah. about the benefit for me, right? Mm -hmm. And we forget that value, it, there's two sets of values. One is the, the one that's set by the, seller, mm -hmm. right? The one who has the, the yeah. product or service and they set a value and that value is set by the cost of goods and, and mm -hmm. the labor and the overhead and the, all the things that go into it. And you say it's worth X amount to me. So for a smaller company, a one or two or five person company, that value may be a whole lot less than a 50 person or a hundred person company, right? There's, there's more in, in, in terms of what they believe is the value right? Mm -hmm. So you, you have somebody that says, Hey, this is worth $5,000. And somebody goes, mm, that's worth 10, you mm -hmm. know, and you're not charging enough and what, but it's all, that's one of the ways we value things. Very right? Interesting. Mm -hmm. right. So then the other is the buyer, mm -hmm. they determine the value. So you go to a car dealer and you say, Hey, I want to get this kind of car with this kind of features and, and the, you know, XM or, you know, the navigation or the blah, blah, blah. These are important to me. Mm -hmm. And you go, okay, great. We've got one in, in red and there's a surcharge on that. And then we've got one in gray. Mm -hmm. If you don't care about red, gray it is. But totally. if you like red, you're all over the red one. You're like, mm -hmm. I don't care how much it costs. That's mm -hmm. valuable to me. So you've created a value in your mind that says, mm -hmm. is that worth $1,000? Is it worth $2,000? Is it mm -hmm. worth 50 bucks? Mm -hmm. And so we, as the buyer, then determine what is the value. So now as the seller, I have to determine mm -hmm. what is important to the buyer and how do I do that? I have to ask questions, right? I have mm -hmm. to ask the, the open questions that get you to tell me, Danielle, what's important to you? Mm -hmm. And so whether it's heating and air or plumbing or duvets, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looking, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my, sure. but, yeah. but you go, Hey, what's important, right? Mm -hmm. What's important about this? particular piece that I'm trying or service that I'm trying to sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do I find out what's important to the person that's sitting across the table from me? And so mm -hmm. you start to ask the right questions. The way that you build value is by answering those questions mm -hmm. in a way that brings value to them. Right. So mm -hmm. Danielle, do you really like the color red? Do you like the color blue? What's your favorite color? Right? My favorite color is pink. Okay. So if I've got a pink vehicle, if I've got a pink heating and air system, would mm -hmm. you be willing to pay more for it? Because, wow, that really speaks to me because that mm -hmm. really, right. So we have to ask the right questions and then address those questions with not just the features. And this is where I think we struggle too, as, as salespeople mm -hmm. or, or as people that sell things, we struggle with providing not just the feature, Hey, here's the whiz bang. And this is really mm -hmm. cool. Don't you think, don't you like it? 
Well, no, because it doesn't mean a thing to me. Right. Hmm. And we get into the, what's in it for me, right. What's in it for that, that buyer. Mm -hmm. And when we can address that with the feature in mind, Mm -hmm. it, it is a variable speed because it provides more comfort, more consistent, even temperature. Mm -hmm. That's the benefit. And if consistency is a problem for you in your home, Mm -hmm. I've just spoken to something that's valuable to you. Mm -hmm. And now I've added value to this conversation, right? So that's where that comes in. And I think a lot of times we forget that. And we Mm -hmm. think that just by me being here and by my, I've got all this expertise. This is the other thing that frustrated me for a long time is as salespeople um, or or as people that sell, and I am not trying to just call out salespeople because technicians can sell and, and you sure. know, plumbers. And technically we all do in some form or another, you exactly. know, in different times in life. Right. Exactly. And so how many times do you go into a situation and somebody goes, Bleh, and they just throw up all the information, every detail about this stuff. And, and they talk for an hour and a half. And all of a sudden you're just sitting there going, Bleh, and you get this glossy look on your face mm-hmm. and they're like, you know, that's great. I'm going to need to get three quotes. <laughs> What just happened, right? Yeah. I thought they yeah. were. It's so were with annoying. Us. Like, dude, seriously, you're not even taking a second to listen to me. You didn't even take mm-hmm. a second to breathe, right? Mm-mm. And we've yeah. all been guilty of this. And, mm-hmm. and and I love when Matt says that. By the way, everything that I teach is things that I've done myself. Okay, so fair, right? Absolutely, right. and that's how fair. and we learn the trial and error of it. We absolutely. Learn. Yeah, the other day we had a team meeting, and I pulled up in the dictionary, dictionary.com, the word um, U H M or U M. Right. And I was trying to prove the point to my team of, hey, we pursue excellence. So when we're speaking or doing a Zoom call, we don't say, um, 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 because that's not excellent. And um isn't a word. But as I pulled it up in the dictionary, um is a word. And that surprised me. But here's what it means. It's not uh, as I'm having a conversation saying the word, um, yes, that's a word. No, it's a word when we use it to interject. So, for example, here you are that salesperson that's just like throwing up on me. Um, excuse me, you're not listening to me. Is all is what I can think of. Nice. Is you know what? That's when you say, um, is we have to get in front of the salesperson and say, no, 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 no. I need my value. Right. But to your point, the buyer should never have to do that. Yeah, the seller exactly. has got to pay attention and care about the value of the buyer. Exactly. And so the other piece of this, the value add that we have that we could give is number one, listening. If mm-hmm. we ask the questions and then we listen and we listen with the intent to understand, mm-hmm. not to be understood. Mm-hmm. And so we've, we may have heard that before, but the difference between being understood and understanding is simply this. Um, it, it's, and I heard this before, if you want to be interesting, be interested. Mm. right so if you want Mm -hmm. people to think you're interesting then what do you have to do you have to be interested in them Mm. danielle i'm sure you've done this you've had these conversations with people Mm -hmm. and you they were glued to every word that you said Mm -hmm. and they they they, there's distractions all around but their focus Mm -hmm. is on you and they're they're looking you in the eye and they're they're nodding they're doing they're doing everything that they need to do as a good listener Mm -hmm. they're interested and so what do you think about that person holy mackerel this this person they were interested in me. Well, and I think they it's were great. So We've got this great connection. Right. Yeah. And they're so they like interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and so as people that sell, one of the best things that we can do is number one, by being interested, understanding the person that we're talking to and the information that we're trying to understand, as opposed to trying to throw up on people and being understood mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. trying to be interesting, right? When we try mm-hmm. to be interesting, we, we, we've all done this. I do this. I, mm-hmm. when I try and be interesting, I look like a fool mm-hmm. plain and simple. Yeah. So this is, that's the second time today that somebody has said that phrase to me. And it's usually not one that is spoken very often. So interesting. That is the second time today. I had an interview with a candidate this morning that said, Hey, over the last six years, I have learned seek first to understand and then to be understood, which is Proverbs. And that's exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. It's wisdom from Proverbs is seek first yeah. to understand and then to be understood. You know, it's um, the how to win friends and influence people. Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love to read that book about once a year because okay. it's such a big slap reminder. I, slap isn't the right word. I was thinking more of a hit by a baseball bat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. And it's back to the basics yeah. of caring about people. 
Yeah. Being interested in people, caring about people. We don't all have to be superstar, excellent salespeople. I right. am definitely not. But caring about people right. and what they're interested in. And then we can show and build value. Yeah. And when we learn how to, and, and this is the one of the things I, I find with good salespeople is they do care. They're, they're empathetic mm-hmm. and they, they are caring to the point where you see it and you feel it when you're talking with mm-hmm. them. And again, they're, they're locking eyes with you and they're, they're listening to every word you're saying and mm-hmm. they're attentive. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's yeah. all of that stuff is super important. Of course, you know, we can get and it builds the, trust and you want to buy from them. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, and again, none of us want to buy from a sleazy salesperson that we feel like right. does a is not being honest. B doesn't like or value us or, or care about our wants. Right. Yeah. And they're not building value. I mean, by, mm-hmm. by just talking or not listening to you, they're not building value. And when mm-hmm. they listen to you, they build value mm-hmm. and that's all part of it too. Right. So yeah, yeah, it's been fascinating just to mm-hmm. look into and kind of do a deeper dive on what is value and how do we listen or how do we, how do we understand the perceived value that our buyers have? Right. And how this, do address is, that? this is a different track than I thought we would go down today. Right. You're the second Be- person to say that this week, by the way. Really? <laughs> yes. Because when you said value, I first thought more intrinsic value, mm. like being valuable, feeling valuable, not in regards to the sales transaction, mm-hmm. but value is value. So staying on the value track, could we chat for a second about employees and managing teams and that kind of value, right? Yeah. People want their intrinsic value. They want to p- feel valuable. Yes. They want to feel like they're doing a good job. But today in the workforce, it is difficult to be a great manager or business owner or manager when the landscape really has changed, right? It, has. Uh, it used to be that everybody totally was going to work 40 hours a week because that's what it was or plus, plus, plus. Right. But today, what I'm seeing and experiencing is more people want less, 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 like pay me for 40. But what's valuable to me is flexibility and time off and working from home. And so it's, it's difficult. It's causing some friction on the employee employer relationship. Sure. And I believe that it's time to get back to wait a minute, let's value our people again and find out what's valuable to them. Yep. And, and not always just stereotype and say, okay, well, they just have their hand out, they're just being lazy, they're entitled because I'm hearing these words about this next generation. Mm -hmm. So do you have any comments on that kind of value? Absolutely. So a couple of things, and and I I hear this from people, right? They want to complain about this generation or the one prior to that, right? The Gen Gen Y, Gen Z. I don't even know what generation we're on. (laughs) Right. But um, so the the funny thing is, is the people who are complaining about it are the parents Mm -hmm. of those, of that generation. Totally. Right. So Uh (laughs) it becomes funny to me because then it's like, well, wait a minute. So you're saying that we're the problem Mm -hmm. because we are, Mm -hmm. we set it up to be this way, but to your point, there's become a huge shift in, Mm -hmm. in the workplace and the pandemic has, has really, I believe has, has not blown it up, but really brought it to the surface Mm -hmm. and really exposed it in a way that we've never experienced it before. We mm-hmm. were hearing rumblings of this before. We were feeling the rumblings of, man, I'm, I'm tired of working 50, 60 hours mm-hmm. a week. I'm tired of the, you are expected to, to answer your phone at night. You're expected right. to answer your phone on the weekend. Right. You're expected, expected, expected with nothing in return. No, thank yes. you. No, I'm, I'm not a person that needs to be on the forefront, standing up on top and, and let's have a parade for Chris. No, mm-hmm. I'm not interested in that. What mm-hmm. I am interested in is, Every once in a while, I need you to just say, you know what, Chris, you're doing a great job. Thank Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And it's the simple little thing for me that goes a long way. So I do this with people and and sometimes they're they're like, they look at me like the side eye, right? They're like, Mm -hmm. did he just say that? Because it they're not used to hearing it. But I I I stop and I'll say, Hey, Danielle, you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. And Mm -hmm. right. But we don't know how to take that sometimes nope. because we don't hear that very often. And when we do, it's like, are you being sarcastic? Right? Are you right. being real? Are, are you, you flattering being, me? Are mm-hmm. You try, what do you want? Right? What mm-hmm. What do you want me to yeah. do? You want me to answer the phone calls this weekend? But right, you're What's right. The expectation. 
we've we've gotten away from the real value of what employees bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And we think that um, I, I saw a, a meme or an article the other day um, that talked about this very thing, right? Where the employer says, hey, congratulations, great job. You hit your numbers for the quarter. We're going to have a pizza party. Now, some people look at that and they go, oh, that's awesome. Thanks for doing that, right? Mm-hmm. But the employee, some employees are looking at that and going, so you spent $100 on pizza mm-hmm. and okay, I'm gluten-free and vegan. Totally. Or right. you spent $100 on pizza. Why don't you give me a hundred bucks? Why don't you give They'd them a hundred bucks? They mm-hmm. would rather have, and it's not, it, it's, it's turned to that because we've, we forced this other way on them for so long. And I say mm-hmm. us, because again, I'm, I've been part sure. of this, sure. but as employers, we we've mm-hmm. seen this go the other direction for too long. And we we've, we've had this, this old school mentality that says, just work them to death until you can find somebody to replace them. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Instead of in, and, and Oh gosh, I'd love to, I can't remember who said it, but there's a, there's a conversation between uh, HR and, and the CEO. And mm-hmm. the conversation goes something like this, um, HR, gosh, uh, what if we, if we train these people and they leave mm-hmm. and the CEO says, what if we don't, and they stay mm-hmm. right. So now it becomes this, phrase. right now it becomes mm-hmm. this, we want to invest in them. And if they do better, awesome. Mm-hmm. Congrats. We wish you the best. If, if you found a better opportunity and it's best for you and your, and your family or whatever, we will happily help you move in that direction. And that was one of the things that was taught to me when I first became a leader was find your replacement, Mm -hmm. find the person that's going to replace you Mm -hmm. and do what you can to build up the team around you so that you can be replaced and in a, in a positive way, right? How do you look for your replacement? Mm -hmm. And so when I went into leading these companies, number one, they were like, who are you and what are you doing? What we've never seen this before. And, and, and not like I'm some superstar, but it was, mm-hmm. it was just a different mentality because it was taught sure. to me. Right. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to pass that along. My why is very simple. I, mm-hmm. I'm a, like you with the Dale Carnegie. I mm-hmm. do with, with Simon Sinek. I like to read start with why every year mm-hmm. because it means a lot to me. And, and my why is really simple. I'm inspired to help others do what inspires them so mm-hmm. that they may be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And for me, there's nothing like helping someone to succeed. Mm -hmm. I want them to be better than I was. I I did okay as a salesperson. I mean, I I did 2 million in sales and that was really cool. And, but there were guys doing three and five and 10 million. Right. And there are, there are people that are doing far more than that now. Right. Mm -hmm. How do we make them better than us? How do we encourage them to do a better job and to be a better person and Mm -hmm. succeed where we failed? we show them the door, right? We show them, Mm -hmm. and I don't mean the way out, but we show them the opportunity that lays in front of of them and we encourage them, right? So as leaders in, in to back to your question Mm -hmm. about how do we value the employees? Number one, I I do this with the businesses that I work with. When I coach them, I can't motivate your team. I tell Mm -hmm. them first and foremost, I cannot motivate your team because I don't know what motivates them. And I had to learn that when I, when I first got into leadership, I, I kept thinking, let me just, I'll give them a hundred bucks if they do this, or I'll give them a hundred right. bucks if they do that. Right. Yeah. And I kept trying to throw money at them, which was maybe mm-hmm. a motivator for me, but it mm-hmm. wasn't for them. And I said to him, it, it finally dawned on me. I was like, this is mm-hmm. frustrating, but I finally went to one of them and I said, Roger, I got to know what is it that motivates you? And it was a simple question, mm-hmm. but his response was amazing. He said, I want a day off with pay. And I went, mm. really? I mean, I can work that out. That's easy, but right. That's, really? That's what you want? Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and a thank you and it, right. I mean, the mm-hmm. simple stuff, but right. we don't ask our people, right. We yeah. don't ask the team that we work with. Mm-hmm. What is it that motivates you? And for, you know, back to your question or back to your statement earlier, maybe it's, I work better at home mm-hmm. when my kids need me. I'm there, right? When mm-hmm. my spouse needs me, I'm there, right? Or I've got somebody at home that's sickly and I need to kind of be there, mm-hmm. but they're working, you know, when you, when you support them, they're going to feel valued. They're mm-hmm. going to want to work more than 40 hours and not that mm-hmm. you're going to push it on them, 
but they're going to want to do more because you believe in them and you take care of them right. and you, you give them the freedom to do and be an adult. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for too long, I think the workplaces have been, let's, let's treat them as kids mm-hmm. and we don't allow them to grow up and we don't mm-hmm. allow them to make decisions and have the freedom right. and do all that stuff. And as yeah, a and person, I, I think that sometimes that we would be very surprised with what's really valuable to them. Absolutely. Right. It's very easy to assume and yeah. put in our own minds and our own projections. Oh, everybody on my sales team is going to want a new convertible. Maybe not. No, they they might just need a set of tires. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like they might just need it. Yeah. Or it could be something smaller to your point, a day off with yeah. pay. Yes, you can do that. Because they want to go fishing. Right. They just need a minute. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe they're burnt out. You know, it's a yeah. long time ago. I was in Bible school and it was, I was managing a million dollar direct mail account. Like it was actually a very big account to be mm-hmm. managing for an 18 year old at the time. You know, I was a kid yeah. and we were doing these big uh, super dome events where we would have 80,000 teenagers in this huge dome event. And there was a lot of logistics, a lot of mailing, a lot of stuff. And I was working so much. I was in school and college at the same time, just exhausted, mm-hmm. exhausted, exhausted. And I had a manager that sat down with me and he just reached into his pocket and pulled out two movie tickets. He's like, you know, uh, you just take the day off and go to the movies. Like, I will never forget that. And yeah. to, to this day, that's like the best thing a manager has ever done for me. Right. He just handed me two two movie tickets. No, it's okay. Don't be so stressed out. Just go to the movies. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you right. Know? So it's not always such a big deal, but I think sometimes we're afraid to ask our team what they care about because we assume it's going to be some huge thing that we cannot provide. Sure. Sure. And and something as simple as it's Friday at noon and you go, mm-hmm. you've been busting your butt all week. Totally. And something's, you know, clearly you you need some time. Do me a favor shut down. I mean, mm-hmm. if there's something you need to finish, finish it now, but, but mm-hmm. shut down and, and go ahead and take the rest of the day and enjoy mm-hmm. it and, and mm-hmm. recoup, do what you need to find your red chair. Right. Yeah. Isn't <laughs> that the no, find yeah. that time. I'll never forget. It was Thanksgiving a couple of years ago. And we at our company had a big software release that we were doing and we were waiting for the Apple store to release this new release of, of our product right. on the, uh, you know, in the, in the, Apple in the store. app store. Yeah. Right. And so we were waiting and waiting and we were pushing refresh and pushing refresh. And we've been waiting all night. It was like a really big deal for the team, but it was the day before Thanksgiving. It was the Wednesday and everybody got off at noon. And that was just known that everybody got off at noon. And so at noon, you know, half the team leaves. Right. And then us that were working on the development project, we're like not leaving until it's done because we couldn't. Like we have to finish this today. We're on deadline. And we're working, working, working. And at about 4 30, I remember walking downstairs and I was like, what are you guys doing here? Hmm. And everybody else was still here when I thought they'd all left. They were downstairs oh, wow. playing cards. So like, we're waiting on the team. Oh. Like, they got off at noon, but instead of yeah. going home with their family, they're like playing cards, just waiting to celebrate hmm. the release with everybody. Wow. Isn't that special? Yeah. But my point to your point is sometimes, yeah, give them the day off, give them the flexibility. And then it really builds the freedom mm-hmm. for them to give more when they want to. Yeah. So that they don't feel like all you're doing is taking, taking, taking as an employer. Yeah. When was the last time you took your team out for lunch and didn't talk about work? Oh, never. I never go to lunch. Well, but, <laughs> like conviction. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when, when was the last time you said, hey, let's meet at the IHOP or let's meet at the Cracker Barrel or let's meet it at- It has been years yeah. since what I have you- personally. I hope everybody listening has done it way yeah. more recently than I have. But but just take what your, an easy thing to do. Take your team and and talk about their family. Talk about mm-hmm. things that are interesting to them and and mm-hmm. get to know your team. I mean, and hopefully you do. Hopefully you know your mm-hmm. team and hopefully you've gotten the time and the experience with them and you know what makes them tick and you know what is motivating to them. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, I mean, start with the simple things and and it's the little things. And it it may mm-hmm. just be that Danielle, you're doing a great job and I don't want you to think that I don't notice it. I do. I see it and I appreciate it. And it means a lot or a handwritten note. When was the last time you hand wrote a note to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Those, I tell you what, I, I do that for my girlfriend every once in a while. I just, I, and I'll, I'll write up a note, I'll handwrite it and then I'll stick in the mail. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, two days later, she's like, I got this. Thank you. So, and it's so special, but for me, I think about that and what it would mean and what it does mean when I get those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I think, why not do that for others? Right. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily work for everybody, but 
why not? Right. I mean, we're so far from a handwritten note, right? When was the last time you we did are. something like that? Man. Yeah, it is far. I sent somebody a handwritten note because they did a keynote address and it was excellent. And I sent yeah. a handwritten note afterwards. And a year later, they said, Danielle, that note really stood out. Thank you for that. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't even remember I did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. I don't always do those things. Right. Um, but to your point, it makes such a lasting impact. So that brings the value. I mean, that, that bring this whole thing full circle, right? Those are the little things that can add value to that relationship, to that working relationship that you have to the people and, and get them to, and, and you have to be sincere about it, but, mm-hmm. you know, do these things with sincerity and you'd be amazed at the length that they will go to for you. You know, mm-hmm. a valued employee will go the extra mile and you don't do it for those reasons. You do it because you care about them. You mm-hmm. want them to work a normal life and, or have a normal life. And, yep. you know, you know, same goes with customers. We've talked about the sales experience and then the employee experience, but same with customers appreciating and finding what's valuable to them and reaching out every once in a while. And it's not difficult to do small touch points with our customers of, yeah. Hey, you know, I know you're interested in this. I saw this, thought you might like to know what's coming up. Yeah. Right. Even customers want to be thought of. And it yeah. goes a long ways when they know that you as their service provider actually think of them. Yeah. Oh, you know, my, you know, you know, my kid's name, or you knew that there was this circus right. in town I might want to go to. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, simple things. Yeah. And again, it starts with simple questions. You know, what is it that motivates you? And they may not know the answer to that, but give them a chance to think about it. And don't mm-hmm. forget, come back to them and say, have you, have you had a chance to think about this? You know, and they're mm-hmm. going to, you know, they'll get around to it. They will. Mm-hmm. They'll tell you what motivates them. Um, yeah. if you're genuinely interested and that helps you because now, you know, not to manipulate, now, you know, how to work with them. Now, you know, how mm-hmm. to help them. Right. Mm-hmm. And Hey, if you can do this, then, then, you know, here, here's four tickets to the ball game this weekend. Mm-hmm. If you can make it, man, you know, please totally. go and take your family and joy, you mm-hmm. know, but whatever it is, right. That motivates and, and helps people. And so when we do those things, people will feel valued and they are valued. Um, mm-hmm. especially when we get down to doing it with sincerity. So mm-hmm. Chris, I really appreciate you being here today. I feel like you have given us some really great nuggets and reminders that all of us need to be reminded to look for the value in other people and to help pull that value out and have understanding for it. So thank yeah. you for that. Thank you. Anybody, I appreciate being here. Yeah. I'm so glad you were. How could people get a copy of the red chair experience how could they purchase it where could they find more chris michelle well um so as we speak it is literally being uh it's it's in production so we don't have a hard copy we are we are so close (laughs) um i would tell you that uh you can go to coachchrisconsulting.com and Mm -hmm. you will see a tab called the red chair and if you click on that um, very soon, there will be a landing page called the Red Chair Experience that you can awesome. just type in on your web browser. It'll take you right there. And you'll you'll have the ability to order a book or books. Um, you can order signed copies only from there. Um, mm-hmm. But you'll also be able to find it on Amazon and, mm-hmm. and Barnes and Noble and that kind of stuff Fantastic. too. So, yeah. Excellent. Great. Well, I hope everybody does definitely reach out, stay in touch with Chris and uh, build a little bit of a relationship with him if you, if you can, because he's got a, a lot of great wisdom to share and definitely check out his book. Thank you again, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. We'll see you later. And now for story time with David Hutton. You know, we came to the new flat rate out of desperation, to be quite honest. It was sort of our last resort. Um, we were down to like our last ten or $15,000 in the bank, and it was like, you know, a very big initial investment to, you know, for us to, to join up. And, uh, but numbers don't lie. If you start tracking numbers, you know, they will tell you things. And our numbers were telling us we have to make more money. Um, ironically, our overhead was higher when we started than it is now, percentage wise, you know. Um, and our, our tickets were $400, $450 average tickets. They weren't terrible tickets industry uh, standard ones. yeah really it's like, how are we going to essentially charge our customer more for the same um product you know that's it's not easily doable and there's a lot of people in town where we're from that the pricing is all over the place you know and so we were sort of priced right in the middle um hourly rate wise um 
Joe focusing more on HVAC calls, me focusing on electrical. And we noticed it started doing exactly what they said it was going to do. Uh, people were picking silver options a lot of the time. Um, we had customers that... And for, for people who don't really know yeah. what that is, like how much, if, if you're down for it, like how much price range increase was that? Like what, what did that uh, do we for We ran the numbers, company? you know, after we started uh, using the system and we easily doubled our numbers. I mean, we had tickets in the eights on average. Um, and then before COVID, I mean, we were tracking to $1,200 average tickets. We it, it honestly saved our business um, because I, there's no way that we could have doubled our prices without, you know, offering our customer more service. Yeah. And that's not something that's easily done uh, any other route. You know what I mean? You're making your own pricing books and, and spreadsheets and things. That's a lot of that's a lot of back end work. And then you have to build it in front of your customer. Um, you know, nine times out of ten on these service calls, I can get on the on the page that we need as soon as the diagnostic is done. I can find the page within a minute yeah. and be ready to present. You know, once you once you get um, using it and, and familiar with it, it, it's it's pretty easy to navigate. To learn more about Chris's book, The Red Chair, check out his website at coachchrisconsulting.com. Thanks so much for listening. Have a platinum day.